If you're still with us, that means that by this point you've downloaded, installed, and activated the events calendar, and that you've purchased, downloaded, installed, activated, and plugged in your license key for the Community Events add-on. This screencast is going to get into some of the functionality of Community Events, specifically reviewing the different settings you have available on the settings panel pertaining to it. Now I'm going to show you the front end submission form here just for the sake of showing you how some of these changes we make on the settings panel impact the front end of the site. I have a separate screencast coming up in a moment where I'll go through this form in more depth and how to access it. Let's go back to the dashboard though and click into settings the events calendar. From there we're going to go into the community tab that was just created when we installed community. Now it's important to note that what you're looking at here are the defaults for the community plugin when you install it out of the box. And a lot of these things are turned off. So if you want to enable a lot of the additional functionality that this plugin comes with, you should probably come in and turn some of these on before you actually begin using it. And I'm going to review from top to bottom what all these actually do. Allow anonymous submissions allows anybody to submit from the front end of the site, whether or not they have a user account or not. When it's turned off, as it is now, Users who have had an account created under this users section can submit events, but anybody else cannot. If you want to open it up to a broader range of individuals and don't want to have to be coming in and setting up user accounts for everybody who will submit, turn on anonymous submissions with this checkbox. Use visual editor for event descriptions. You'll see on the front end form here, the event description by default is simply a box, a text box with no visual editor options. But if you're running WordPress 3.3 or higher, Come in, check this box, and you can enable a visual editor on that front end form that looks very similar to the one you see when creating events, posts, pages, whatever on the back end of the site. The default status for submitted events determines what happens to an event when it comes into the system. Does it remain in draft format? Does it go to pending review so an editor or an admin has to review it and publish it? Or does it automatically go live, which would be published? If you're concerned about having editorial oversight over everything that goes out on your site, you should probably start on either draft or pending review. Published, I would only suggest for people who are totally comfortable with what the community is submitting and don't feel like they need to review things before they go live. The community rewrite slug is where the community events add-on lives on the site. It's very similar to the events URL slug, which is configured under this general tab, and which is where the events calendar as a whole lives. Now you'll see down below, it gives us an uh, example of where the community events calendar lives. Now everything up until events is really my, really my site. Localhost, community test site, that's just my local testing environment. Events is where the calendar lives. Community is a sub portion of that calendar. And then the form lives at slash add. And the list of my events lives at slash list. But I could change both the events slug and the community slug. The events slug, again, I need to go over to general since that's a core plugin behavior. But the community slug we can change right here. So if I wanted to change this to submissions, neighbors, whatever, anything else in the world that I want to, I would just plug it into this field right here and save. And when I saved, my change and the new community URLs will be reflected in the examples down below here. Alerts do pretty much exactly what you'd expect. They send an email alert to whoever you want to be notified whenever a new submission comes through. You'd enable them with this checkbox, and then down below here is where you actually would start adding in the email addresses. Etc. Etc. One per line. If you add multiple addresses per line, it's not going to work. But so long as you have a separate one on each line, every one of those recipients will get a notification when a new submission comes through. It's worth noting that if you do what I just did here and add email addresses into the field but don't check the box, nothing is going to happen. This box does need to be checked in order for these email addresses to begin receiving notifications. Now down below, we have the members option. This is where you are giving the community access to their own events. You can allow them to edit their submissions by checking this box. If you don't do that, they will have to live with what they've submitted and only you can make changes. If you allow them to edit their submissions, they have a position on the front end where they can do so, and I'll show you that in just a second. If you want them to remove it, check here. This means that they have the option to be able to remove the events if they've submitted it and the event is canceled or whatever. Again, if you do not allow them to do this, you'll have to remove the events yourself. And then the last option is use trash versus delete when removing. If you've enabled the second checkbox, allowing them to remove their submissions, how do you want those removed submissions to be treated? Do you want them to just go into the events trash on the back end, which you have access to and can pull them out from if you see fit? Or do you want them to be deleted entirely, which completely wipes them from the system? It's up to you. Just know what you're getting into when you check this last box here. 
Now, my events is the my events list on the front end that I mentioned a minute ago. And the only way you're really going to ever see this is if you have access to edit your submission. So I'm going to enable this right now just so you can see what it's going to look like on the front end. Refret, let the page refresh here for a second. You'll see now if I go back to the submit form and refresh it, when I do so, we have this My Events button that wasn't here previously. If I click that, it goes into my list of all the events that I've submitted. And since I've only submitted one so far, it's not too long. If it were lengthy and I had a whole bunch of events, I might want to come up and use this display option to filter down. But we'll get into that in a, greater, in a further screencast. Right now you'll see, because I enabled those features, I do have the option to edit my event. I can also delete it. The next few options we're going to review also relate to this My Events list. The events per page is just the number of events in the loop, nothing too out of the ordinary there. Defaults 10, but you can change it to whatever you see fit, and that change will not impact any of your other loops, be they events loops or otherwise, on the site. Date and time formatting is pretty basic. If you want to customize it, we do include a link to the WordPress codec so you can do what you see fit. And the pagination range comes into play when you have a whole bunch of events, enough that they push onto a subsequent page. In that case, you start to get pagination options right here. And this option allows you to control just how many pages show on either side of the current page. Let's say you're on page three of events. If you set this number as two, that means you're going to see page one and two on the left-hand side of three, and four and five on the right-hand side of three when you view it on the front end here. More than anything, this is just a, a way to ease navigation. You're still going to always have access to all the events in your front end list, but if you want to make sure that people are seeing X page or Y page before or afterwards on the events list, this is the way to do it. Really, I don't really see many situations in which you're going to have to change this from four. The access control allows you to block access to the WordPress admin, which means that if people come try to hit slash WP admin on your site, they're unable to do so. It also disables the admin bar, but if you want it on, just check this box, and then come down to the roles to block section below, and select which roles you want to block. Now you can't block administrators, obviously, because that would potentially block you from your own site, but everything from editor down to subscriber is fair game, and feel free to block off as many of these as you see fit. The redirect URL is just where people who attempt to access that WP admin URL are taken. If you want it to be a separate site, make sure to plug in a full URL that includes the HTTP slash slash. And if you leave it blank, it's just going to go to the home page, which nine times out of 10 is the most elegant solution in such a situation. If I had Events Calendar Pro active, I would see one more section down here called Pro Options. And there would be two fields in there. One would allow me to set a default organizer that was automatically filled in on the Add New field when somebody came to the front end of the form. So rather than giving them the option to fill in organizer details, these would be populated for them. They still could fill it in if they wanted to, but they would also already have details filled in so they wouldn't have to. And the other is a default venue, which does very much the same thing. If you want to set it so that anybody coming to submit events on your site has a default venue in place, which again, they can overwrite if they see fit, you absolutely can do so. That does require pro, and since I'm not running pro, I'm obviously not going to see those options down below. Once I'm satisfied with all the changes I've made, I just come down here, hit Save Changes, and you are all set. They've taken effect when you see this Setting Saved option, and you're now ready to begin using the plugin, which is what I'm going to review in the next screencast, which really gets into the nitty-gritty of how the community events front-end form and list work. Thanks for bearing with us so far. Got a couple more of these, and then you'll be all set to go with community events.